So I'm going to wager uh, a guess here and imagine that you were a little bit shocked by the content of The Age of Reason by Thomas Paine. Uh, if you felt a little bit of discomfort reading this, uh, just imagine the type of fury that it caused when it was originally published in the 1790s. Uh, this shocking text uh, written by one of the forefathers of America uh, really challenges our conceptions that the United States is purely and simply uh, a nation formed on the foundations of Christianity. Uh, Paine was an example of a, a deist, somebody who believed in God but had problems with uh, the church and sort of the beliefs that it proposed and also had problems with some of the uh, arguments proposed by religious texts such as the Bible and the Quran and uh, the Torah. So the thing is, is that pain, we have to, even though he, he ca does cause us these sort of problems, uh, we have to give him credit because on one hand, he definitely has guts to say what he feels. And on another hand, he is also the author of Common Sense, uh, which you may have heard of. It was a chief pamphlet that was passed around uh, in the time uh, around the revolution. Uh, this pamphlet is something that has been given tons of credit for actually making anything work. Uh, for example, uh, it would have been totally possible for them to write the Declaration of Independence and that actually not necessarily even result in anything. But common sense was what uh, rallied the people uh, to rebel against uh, the government of Great Britain. Uh, Paine actually wasn't even born in the United States, and he had uh, a lot of roots in a, a lot of different places. Uh, when this text came out, it did definitely rattle a lot of cages. Although uh, Second President John Adams said that Thomas Paine and his beliefs and uh, the writing of Common Sense was an absolutely uh, necessary thing to do, uh, there was a lot of hesitation about the age of reason itself because it so fundamentally challenged uh, the religious beliefs of, you know, pretty much everybody. Uh, it rattled cages so much that uh, Paine was widely hated in England. Uh, in large part, he was uh, a supporter of the French Revolution, and even though he actually at one point was imprisoned in France for 10 months and nearly beheaded, uh, the legend goes that the only reason he wasn't beheaded was because the note that said something like behead this guy on his uh, prison cell was accidentally misplaced. Uh, so this was a guy who definitely was not afraid of kicking the hornet's nest. Uh, but he wasn't alone in this type of stuff. Uh, even Thomas Jefferson uh, the third president and the author of the Declaration of Independence also challenged the conception of the, our current conception of the United States as being a country founded on purely Christian ideas. As Jefferson, although he cherished his Bible, in fact went through the Gospels and edited out many of the miracles done by Jesus, instead uh, believing uh, in a Jesus who was less supernatural. Uh, so we only had to read a few chapters of The Age of Reason, but I believe they give us uh, a pretty good idea of where this document is going. Uh, as I stated, uh, Paine definitely believed in God, uh, which he states right from the get-go in this document, but he had serious problems with many of the ways that Christianity is actually uh, brought about uh, and preached. Uh, he believes that churches, whether they be Christian, Jewish, or Turkish, which is uh, the Muslim, uh, temples and such, uh, he thought that these institutions enslave and terrify uh, the masses into conformity. Uh, he was a fan of the idea that the, the real church of an individual, the real spiritual truth for an individual, is within oneself. Uh, he thought that all these religious texts were based off of revelation. You know, they were based off of uh, a truth as revealed to an individual and then passed down. But he thought that revelation, that's just something for the person who experiences it. Anybody else who follows that revelation, uh, they're just followers. They didn't have that experience themselves. Paine believed that anybody who has a religious awakening shouldn't get it by believing what somebody else tells them, but should get it by following their own way and achieving this sort of awakening on their own. 
Uh, Payne does speak very highly of Jesus, so don't get it wrong. This isn't somebody who is an antichrist figure. Uh, he's not somebody who's necessarily against Christianity even. But he did have problems with the idea of the supernaturality of the types of uh, things that Jesus was alleged to have done uh, and that were espoused in the New Testament. Uh, he was a fan of Jesus because he viewed Jesus much like uh, the Founding Fathers of America, somebody who was a reformer, a governmental and religious reformer, uh, a revolutionary, somebody who was an admirable, uh, most excellent individual, but not necessarily somebody who is going to be able to walk on water, uh, for example. So, the Age of Reason, uh, I assigned it for this class because I think it is a fundamental uh, text of the skeptical vein within American culture. Uh, it's very easy to sort of look back over history and see all of the instances uh, of extreme religion. You know, everybody from uh, Martin Luther King, you know, speaking uh, very directly of uh, religious and Christian truths to somebody like Jonathan Edwards, who wrote Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. Uh, uh, you know, an individual who built an American puritanical foundation uh, on these notions of extreme belief. Uh, but here in, in the United States today, we're not necessarily a country that's monochromatic. We're a country that has a variety of different beliefs. And that skeptical vein uh, is something that Thomas Paine sort of uh, spearheaded, even though uh, it caused him great troubles in his own life. So although the age of reason does remain today a profound challenge to Christians. Uh, a lesson to take away from that is that any faith worth having is one that can withstand a true and serious test. And a document like this is something that can definitely provide that test. So it gives us that. It gives us uh, a lot of rapier wit. Uh, Payne is a very good writer. Uh, he's a firebrand. He says things in a way that are going to be memorable and, in many cases, uh, anger people who are reading it. But also, he's going to challenge uh, our conceptions of what America really is all about. And by doing all of this, we can get a greater idea of the nature of the United States and its literary tradition from the very beginning.